Today, MMORPGs are everywhere. I wouldn't say that the pen and paper style has faded out completely, but it's definitely not the dominant force in role-playing games today. I myself think it's great that the medium is evolving. Don't get me wrong, I still love dice and Game Master Shields. And I don't really play MMORPGs. My admiration comes from envy to the younger crowd of gamers. They're damn lucky to have such easy access to a community that's willing to participate in fantasy-related games. I had a dick of a time trying to get people even interested to play any sort of pen and pencil role-playing game. Once they saw the funny-looking dice, metal figures, and hexagon maps, it was nerd alert, no thanks, and see you later. So, my lonely youth was regulated in reading books like Wizards, Warriors, and You, The Siege of the Dragon Riders. The book is laid out pretty much like a choose-your-own-adventure, but instead of controlling a kid from a Ronald McDonald commercial, you got to assume a role that was respectable, a wizard or a warrior. The wizard has the option to wield the Book of Spells. These are 12 spells that range from move time back, invisibility, and shrink. The warrior has the option to pick three weapons from the Book of Weapons. In addition to that, he has the Sword of the Golden Lion, a magical blade that was supposedly forged by the same swordsmith who created Excalibur. I always found the opening sentence pretty funny. Let it be known that the amazing tale of all that came past for the wizard and the warrior in their battle against the dragon riders is true. A true story with more than 20 different outcomes. The story opens up with the dragon riders attacking the kingdom. Why are they attacking? Dragon riders are just jerks. The king sends you on the quest to deal with the menace of the dragon riders. From there, you can assume the role of the wizard or the warrior. Both partake in the quest but the one you pick becomes the Lone Ranger of the two, while the other is Tonto. I tried the wizard story first. It could have gone better. Most of the spells I would cast would exhaust me physically, or I would just botch the whole thing up. Suffice to say, my quest was pretty short. The warrior's path, on the other hand, played out a little different. I faced three-headed serpents, dragon spiders, eight-foot warlords, Zola the Invincible Dragon. It was sword-swinging action at its best. The combat mechanics are pretty simple. Almost everything is decided by flipping a coin. For example, when you square off with a three-headed serpent, you flip the coin seven times. For every head you get, one of the serpent's heads are lopped off. If you get three, you succeed. If not, then you're snake food and you'll have to start the adventure over. The wizard occasionally flips the coin in the same manner, but also has some eclectic ways to figure out the success of each spell. In one such instance, it tells you to close your eyes and picture the colors red, blue, yellow, and green. As soon as you picture a color stronger than the other, then you're directed to turn to the appropriate page that the color is assigned to. I pondered this choice without the book once. It was after eating one of these and then hitting one of these a couple of times. My advice is to pick the warrior if you want to try out this book. It's more fun chopping heads off than comparing colors. It's not one of these, but it's still a quick roll, 